Hi, I'm Stephanie Padrine. I work at Woodstock Middle School in Cherokee County School District. I'm an eighth grade teacher. Um, we are working with an Honors Accelerated Algebra 1 and Geometry A class today, and we'll be doing a summative task reviewing the characteristics of quadratics. All right, so today is the last day before our milestones. And I have been working, you guys, <laughs> like crazy, and I wanted to do something relevant, but still fun, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going around the school to all the different water fountains and taking a picture of the stream of water as it comes out of the water fountain. You'll use your whiteboard and let the origin be the spot where the water comes out of the fountain. Um, you can take as many pictures as you need. Try to find the best one so it's nice and clear. As an example, Shirley did hers yesterday. So as an example, Shirley's got the spigot of the water fountain at the origin. It's coming up and over. We can see the graph grid nice clearly behind it. And what side of the water do you drink from? I mean, when you lean down to the water fountain, what side do you drink from? The very top edge. So that's what we're going to be using as the edge of our parabola. So you don't want to try to go through the middle of the water. Let's just try to use that top edge of the water. That way we're not guessing at any of the points. Um, if, if you're looking at, you know, a decimal, it's a decimal as far as your ordered pairs go. You know, it's possible that you could have a decimal. Real life math is not all whole numbers and integers, right? We do have decimals and fractions in there. So you can use a decimal estimate, try to get as many um, good points as you can, some on, the, some on the positive side, some on the negative side, so that you can put them into, how, what are we going to do with these ordered pairs? How do you think we're going to get an equation for this? Put them in the graphing calculator into statistics, right? And then what? Do quad reg, okay, do the quadratic regression and let the calculator give us an equation. Now, when we get that equation, what form will it be in? Standard, Standard form. So, um, what we're going to do is once we get that, we've got our pictures, we're going to come the, to the, back to the classroom. If you, can get the, if you can email the pictures to me, I'll get them printed so that you have a nice picture that you can use, okay? Um, we need to find at least four data points. And you want to try to even them out along the, what shape is this? Parabola. Right, along the parabola. So it, you, you, you kind of steer it away from possibly having an exponential situation. Um, and then we're going to get the standard form. Once we get the standard form, you're going to find the other two forms. What were the other two forms that we could write, how, how we could write a quadratic? Vertex form. Vertex form and intercept form, okay? So you're going to do it algebraically. And then you're going to take your equation, you're going to put it into the graph in the calculator, and you're going to verify your algebraic findings with the calculator. Do you guys remember on the graphing calculator what the process was to get the equation into y equals? There you go. Y equals bars and regression equation, right? Okay, awesome. Um, once you get your three forms of equations, which everybody, every water fountain has to have three forms of equations, once you get those, you're going to record all your characteristics of the function. And there's a lot of them, so you might want to check them off as you're getting them done. Um, you know, all your, your, your classification, you guys know what this is, that's the easy one, right? Um, the classification of the function, domain range, intervals of increase and decrease, your vertex, if it's a maximum or minimum, your axis of symmetry, end behavior transformations. Which, which equation do we get transformations out of? Vertex, Vertex form. Mm -hmm. um, applicable intercepts? Intercept, intercept. intercept form, yep. Yeah. And if, if it comes out kind of messy, just go ahead and round to the nearest tenths. Let's just make it all to the tenths place. All right, and at the end, we're going to create like a poster. We're going to put your pictures of your parabolas on there. We're going to say which water fountain it is. We're going to create a poster. We're going to put all this information on there. And then we're going we're gonna to put it up kind of in a gallery type thing, probably at the top of the hallway, because I think the other students are going to be kind of interested to see about all the different water fountains as well. Um, but you guys are going to kind of compare and contrast the water fountains and the equations and try to determine if you could choose any water fountain you wanted to go to in the school, which one would it be? Why? And give a mathematical reason as to why you like it. 
Okay. All right. So let's take a couple minutes and uh, let's get our our um, pictures, make sure we've got them, make sure we can see them, um, and we'll get them printed. And then once you have your pictures printed, you can start working on getting it into the calculator and, and uh, finding the equations, okay? All right, let's go. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the whiteboard, we're gonna hold it behind the water fountain, we're gonna turn the water fountain on, and we're gonna try to get a good picture of the stream of the water. Okay, what shape does the stream of the water create? A parabola. Which means we're looking at what kind of function? A quadratic. Quadratic function, which is a huge part of the Algebra 1 curriculum. Okay, we're going to work on finding all the characteristics, the vertex, the interval increase, interval of decrease, the intercepts, um, all, the, all the information, the equations, of course, and we're, gonna, we're going to do standard form, vertex form, and intercept form so that we can verify all of our um, characteristics not only using the graphing calculator and the regression equation, but also algebraically from that e regression equation and making sure it matches what we get in our graph for our regression equation. Okay. So when you're putting the, the graph board behind the water fountain, what is the, probably the one thing you're going to want to try to do to make the parabola as easy, the picture of the parabola as easy as you can get it? What do you guys think? Try and get like the stream of water to land evenly on a point maybe. Okay. What about where you put the graph? What do you, you think? Want to make it so that it starts at the origin. So you want to yeah. you so we're going to reverse the origin this time. We're going to put yeah. it on the wrong side because mm -hmm. the water's coming from the other direction. Now we can always flip the picture before we print it or we can when we get our parabola, if we use the water coming out, we're going to have to get a good picture, right? So we'll um, we can always use the symmetric nature of a parabola to flip the origin to the other side and physically draw the origin on the other side of the parabola. Okay. Okay? okay? All right, there you go. All right, and then we're going to flash on to make sure you like this. All right, so let's look at some of these. All right, that's a really good one. You've got a nice steady stream all the way. I know sometimes when, when the pictures are being made, you would have some, some breakages. Yeah, where is that one? Oh, yeah. Oh. That one got on the board, so that, you know, it's a good thing that you take more than one picture. Let's see what you guys got. Oh, well, that's a good one, too. So, you know, we can use this, this part right here as our, our origin right here and then the axes, all right? And then we're just gonna find our ordered pairs going around to the other side. Now, even though the water was coming this way, because the parabolas are symmetric, we can actually look at it from this side and still get a good function. Okay, all right. that makes sense. All righty, all right, let's go back and let's get this done. Cool. Okay, so you've got a parabola, and I know it started here when you turned on the water, However, the parabola, we always look at them from left to right. So let's, let's create our origin. Okay, so would this be the y-axis? That would be the y-axis oh, here, okay. and this okay. would be the x-axis there. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Guys, the one thing that people are running into is it feels like the graph is backwards. Yeah. It feels like the origin's on the wrong side. Okay, a parabola, if we're, if we're just trying to find the equation of this parabola, we can set the origin on the other side of the parabola, because aren't parabolas symmetric? Yeah. Okay, so we should be able to set the origin on the other side, on the other, what, what, what is this here? What would that be? X-intercept, okay. So we should be able to set the origin at that X-intercept and then go this way. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then so what you're gonna do is, I wouldn't pick any data pieces in through here because your water got a little wobbly. Yeah. So I'd pick some over here and I'd pick some over here and between, you know, at least four, between what you've got here and here, by the time you put it into the calculator for stat plot, we Wait, should be four good. Points we have, all right, we have three, so, yeah. so try to find try to find a couple more. Even if you have to estimate them. Alright, so draw your axis. You guys could have yours coming right through here. Wait, so do we okay. draw it on this thing? Yeah. Yeah, oh, physically yeah. draw it on here. Okay, so draw your axis on here. Find some data pieces. You can use the outside of the parabola. 
Um, or some people actually found going through the center worked out well because there were some ordered pairs that they felt were at the center of the um, water stream. So you've got, you know, it looks like we've got some good ones here and here and maybe here, and we can use some of these. Now your y-intercept may come, I mean your other intercept may come kind of a little further out down here. Your equation is going to help you with that. All right? All right, so draw your axis, get that going. The stream ends right there and it's at the top. Can we just put that as the origin? Yes. Okay. Yes, because what is the nature of the shape of a parabola? I mean, when you're looking at it in a table of values, what do you notice about the y values as you're going from the intercept to the vertex and then back to the intercept again? What do you notice happens with the values, the y-intercept values, the they y values? They, like, duplicate. Can you get to it? Yeah. Okay, so if they duplicate, even though, even though the water originated on the right, because that shape is symmetrical, you can take the picture and, ins you know, flip it over, okay? So because you've got the same data on either side. If you do a reflection, aren't reflections congruent transformations? Okay, so even if we have this picture this way and we flip it over the other way and make the, make the uh, y-intercept or y-axis here mm -hmm. and the x-axis here and the origin there, we're still going to have the same data because of the symmetrical nature of parabolas. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so what I would do is I would find just data points. Okay, so I would take my pen and go around the outside edge of the parabola. Okay, I know this is a little flat right here. That's an interesting thing. You know, the water is shooting up at a pretty good velocity here, so it's got a nice, nice curve to it. And then as the pressure of it coming out of the smaller pipe releases, it's getting a little less formed. But that doesn't mean the parabola is not good. What that does mean is we're going to use the graphing calculator and the line of regression to try to hit as many of the data points as possible. But what we've got to do is we've got to be able to give the graphing calculator enough data to crunch those numbers to form that curve. Okay, so you're going to take your, your, pen, your pen, right, and you're going to go around the outside edge, and you're going to estimate at least four data pieces, at least four ordered pairs on the graph. Okay, and then from there, you'll put it into the calculator and then get your equation, and then that's when you start with the algebraic stuff. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. How are we doing, guys? I like your ordered pairs. I see them going. You've got your equation already, your quad reg. Yay! Oh, look at your um, look at your correlation coefficient. That's very high. That means that means your equation is going to hit most of the uh, most of the data pieces. Have you been able to get it in the graph on uh, using the data? Do you remember how to do that? I don't see all of it. What can we do? I don't think standard does it. Where is this data? Where'd you put the data? Okay, so look through Zoom and see if you remember we had one. Where is it? There it is. Remember the Zoom stat? Now we can see all that data again. Got it? Okay. It increases at an increasing rate up to here. Yeah, we're going from here to here. Remember, you always look from left to right. Okay. Even though the water is going that direction, when we're looking at a graph, just like when you're reading a sentence, you've got to go from left to right. Later on, you will have to figure out the interval increase and the interval decrease, but you do it from left to right. Now, let me ask you this. Why can we read it from left to right and wind up with the same parabola as we did if we read it from right to left. Because it's symmetric. Because it's symmetric. Because of the symmetric nature of parabolas. Think about the, the, remember the table of values that we used to set up at the very beginning when we were doing it? The 12 days task. Remember the table of values? What happened with those y values? Yeah, on either side of the vertex they matched. So even if I do look at it from a different direction on there, I look at it from left to right instead of right to left, because the y values match on either side, 
the data is still going to give me good, a good equation. Okay? All right, so you guys need to get some ordered pairs and some ordered pairs. If going through the middle is too difficult to read the graph, use the top edge because that's where, you're, that's where you would touch the water anyway. We just you're, decided to do that because that's where it... It was just easier that way? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do we get standard of the like It's right here. That is standard for AX squared plus BX plus C. So yeah, we're gonna have some, we're gonna have, this is real life data. When you have real life data, you have real messy numbers. So we did talk about we're gonna round to the tenths place. Okay, now this one you're probably gonna have to take it to the hundredths because you don't have anything in tens. And you can't have zero for A because as soon as you put down zero for A, what happens to the X squared term? Exactly, and then you no longer have a quadratic. It turns linear. So um, you'll probably need to do the 0.04. Um, and this one, your numbers are so small on these two, I would definitely go to the hundredths place. Does it make sense for it to be negative since it's like the negative graph? You tell me. What's the shape of that graph? I'm just making sure. Yeah, so it's a negative quadratic. You know, it's not a happy graph. Yeah. It's a sad graph. I was like confused at first. I was like, oh, wait. Maybe that's right. These are happy graphs. Okay. The smiling up is a happy graph. This is a sad quadratic. Sad quadratics are negative quadratics because they're not looking at the good side of things. Okay, so it does make sense for this to be a negative because it's 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 got that um, reflection. The reflection's happening. Okay, reflection over the x axis. So the x of the vertex is b over two a. Negative b over two a. Yeah, yeah. Negative b over two a. And then how do you? That's the x part of the vertex. How do we find the y part? Plug, plug, it in. In. plug it in. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be kind of messy. Okay. Yeah. Real data is messy. Real life is messy. Real data is messy. We did like that algebraic for vertex form. Okay. But it's different than what it would be if we just like plug the vertex in. Cuz we got How like, much different? Like cuz that would be 5. So this is the equation that we have. Yeah. And that's the equation that we got when we put it into vertex. Yeah. That is very different. Okay, so how did you do the vertex form? Well, did you try to do um, completing the square? Yes. Okay. You can do completing the square to get vertex form. With all these decimals and us rounding it, yeah. okay. we may have corrupted the data a little bit by oh, losing okay. the decimals. What's another way? What's another th way that we can find the vertex from standard form other than completing the square, since the data is kind of messy. Tell me the quadratic formula. All right, so what part of the quadratic formula gives you the x part of the vertex? That might be a little bit easier than going through the completing the square. Yeah. yeah. Especially since the data is so messy. Okay. okay. What's up? So we plugged in our coordinates and we got this, then we realized it's wrong because it's not negative. And then whenever we put it into the graph, it was just nowhere near this. Oh, okay. X minus zero. Um X minus fifteen point two five. That's not zero eight, guys. <laughs> Where's zero eight? Wait. Where is zero eight? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. What's the ordered pair there? Eight zero. Switch those two little guys right there, and maybe that'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. All right. Check that. Now that may have to change this if yeah. if it completely changes your regression equation. Did you guys have any question? Uh, yeah. Okay, where is it? Well, we did the negative um, the top A, one, and it ended up way I'm going to do that. The, the top one. Yeah, and uh, yeah. it look right here? That's the... Minus um, A, C, we, it's for vertex. We did negative the vertex A, form A. was this one? Well, the I very top one. Yeah. So this was mm. when we did the... Yeah. 
Okay, that one was 7.3. Where did that come from? Um, that was when we did, um, did you do the, that minus that? Completing the square. Yeah. I did four. Oh, okay. Well, that one was, that was a little, yeah, yeah but it was still kind of completing oh, yeah, the square, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this, that the one's, that. this one's vertex yeah. form. That was when we did B square, or A to B over 2A. Yeah. Let's see. Zoom. Let's zoom out just a little bit. There's my standard form. That's the funky one. And that's the funkier one. That's the over Yeah. Wow. So should we write that? I think we should do that to this thousand or Two point five. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there's something wrong with your calculations somewhere. Uh, point three parentheses. So just do x equals x I'll do the minus four. I'll do the one you're doing right now. Is that plus? Mm. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing you guys are getting. Negative B over 2A. Is that negative 0.36? Yes. Mm. So I do 2. The top one is negative 13.9444. So 14. So now is it 0.3 or 0.03? Um, no, 0.3. I think it's supposed to be around Point 0.3, three, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Negative B. I oh. Four, Negative three. Oh, minus two. I got something different. Right, so got Negative B. Zero Negative B over 2A. So um, hold on. Let me just make sure one more thing. I don't want it to multiply by three. I don't want it to be doing um, order of operations on me. There's your 5.5. That is interesting that it would... Yeah. So it would be... Round to the tenths. Yeah. Y equals X minus... And this one's going to be so weird that it's... Oh! Girls! <laughs> okay, <laughs> found it. <laughs> found it. Okay. Yeah, it's not a plus 1.8, it was a minus 1.8. When we did a vertex form, it that came out like rules. exactly perfect. Negative. No. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, because it's 6.9 okay. and then 8.8. Let me just go ahead and do that. Which is exactly. No. Is that what? Wow. That's beautiful. And then both of those are okay, like so almost exactly. Well, that one rounds to 14 because it's 0. 0.9. It's negative 13.9. That's beautiful. That is fantastic. So, don't know how I did this. That's negative 14 and that's positive 14. Okay, wait a minute. That's the, that's the actual x-intercept, right? Okay. I mean, no, that, that's the x-value that makes y zero. So if you put in an x, we got to have the opposite of it. Remember? Remember when we were talking about the parentheses? Yeah. Okay. It's separate. Curves? Doesn't ever yeah. really say what it's meaning it's going to say. So your answer was negative, but when it's an intercept form, to get it back inside the parentheses, what do we have to do? If it's negative on the outside, to get it back inside the parentheses, it has to change sign. Okay. So in here, it won't be negative 13.9 or 14, it'll be positive. Because remember, this has to equal zero, and the only way it can be equal zero is if it's the opposite of what you need. All right, so um, you guys have got all your algebraic um, calculations. You verified it by using the calculator to find the vertex and find the x and y intercepts. Remember, you have to set the boundaries on those x and y intercepts and find where it crosses from the positive from the negative to the positive, and that's how the calculator finds it. Yeah. So at this point, you're ready to start working on your summary. Mm -hmm. um, whenever you're doing a project like this, it's always good to put it in words what you're finding. Um, so you'll take your, your picture and you'll put it on your poster, you'll take your data and your, your, um, your equations, all three equations, 
You'll take all your characteristics, you'll put it on here, and then you're going to write a small summary at the bottom. Um, we want to have um, in the written summary that you're going to turn in, not the poster, but on the written summary, you want all the characteristics in context. So if you've got a vertex of 6.9 and 8.8, .8, in context of the water fountain, what does that mean? That's the highest point that it hits. Mm. At? 6.9. Okay, so 6.9 is the high, what's the 8.8? I mean, what, no, 6.9 is the highest? Yep. Six point, is it 6.9? 8.8 would be the highest. 8.8 is the highest. What's the 6.9 about? How far away yeah. it is from the spout. Okay, how far it is from the spout by the time it hits the, the mm -hmm. vertex, right, the maximum. Okay, um, the axis entry, the interval of increase. Okay, some people in Woodstock Middle School are not going to understand what interval in, of increase is. So you need to put it into terms that even a sixth grader will understand. You know, from zero inches to 6.9 6 .9 inches, what is it doing? It's going, it's going up. up. The, the water is shooting up. And then it hits the vertex, so it's still. And then after the 6.9, there's where the water is going down. Thus, it's an interval of decrease. Um, so you want to you wanna do those in context. We're going to get all these posters up. We're going to put them at the top of the hall where everybody can see them. And you're going to walk around and you're going to compare and contrast the water fountains. What kind of things do you think you're going to be looking for when you're doing that? See like, how like, the maximums of other water, fa water fountains are compared to ours. Okay, what else? Anything else? I want to see how like, far out they go compared mm -hmm. to like, the stretches and strengths of them. Okay, all right. So as when, it'll be a lot easier to tell when, when all the pictures are up. You know, you'll be able to see what um, the differences are. Um, we want to include any observations that you found that determined the questions that you guys wrote to begin with. You know, you guys all wrote some questions at the beginning about what did you think you were going to be looking for. You know, if, if you had questions at the beginning, you know, include some of that information in your little write-up. Um, and then if any of your questions ended up being kind of off track or irrelevant, yeah. explain why they were no longer relevant based on the data that you collected. You know, you, you wrote the questions before you collected the data, so there may have been some questions that you didn't realize weren't really going to pertain to the situation. Right. Um, and then if there were any challenges, undefined, <laughs> <laughs> if there were any challenges to collecting the data as far as fitting it to a quadratic or a par parabolic motion, right? Um, and and how your team resolved that. Could we include okay. like how the water would fluctuate, like go up and down when it was shooting out PS? Definitely a challenge, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fluctuation of the water, also the inconsistency of the velocity of the water, which caused the back half of the parabola to break apart, you know, trying to get that nice steady stream all the way through. Those are all great, great you know, things to bring up so that when somebody else takes a look at this and, and sees what you've done, they understand that you did have to, you were dealing with real data. Real data is sometimes kind of inconsistent, so mm -hmm. you, you try to get the best opportunity for the data as you can. So um, you'll have your poster, we'll put it up on the wall, you'll have your, person, your own write-up, and you'll submit that probably through Canvas, and um, you'll be all ready. Okay. You'll all be all set. All right.